Welcome Creative Adventurers. Thank you for stopping by today. I'm Debbie Cohn with Decohn Designs. In today's video, I'll be showing you the tips and tricks and techniques to sew together a diamond four patch block. This is a traditional block and I'm sewing it because I am following along with the quiltinglife.com's block of the month. Each month Sherry McConnell puts out a free pattern for a block and at the end of the 12 months you will have a quilt all put together if you sew along and that's what I'm doing. As you can see I'm using Christmas fabrics. Let me show you the blocks so far. I have January, February, March. This month's block is April. I'll leave a link at the end of this video that shows you a couple of other videos that might be helpful, including my most recent top 10 tools for 2022 that I love and recommend. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the best way to support my channel. Then head on over to my blog and my shop at decondesigns.com where you'll find lots of inspiration, free patterns, and soon patterns for sale, mugs, t-shirts, and quilty merchandise. Be sure to visit aquiltinglife.com where you can download the free pattern each month and go to the YouTube channel of aquiltinglife.com where Sherry gives you tips and techniques as well for putting together the quilt. So let's get started. In today's diamond four patch block, you'll need these things. You'll want to consult your pattern for the size of blocks you're doing. Again, I'm doing the 12 inch blocks. So I have my four and a half inch diamond patches here and my two and a half inch squares for snowballing the corners and then I have my churn dash border sections which I'll sew together separately that I will not show you on the video. Sherry McConnell does show that in her January video. You'll want to check her video for the details on how to sew the churn dash borders. Let me show you the fabrics I've chosen for my diamond four patch. You could of course make them all the same fabric. For me though, I wanted to highlight some of the cute fabrics in my fat quarter bundle. I'm going to use this one. You can see I fussy cut it, the green in the bundle, the red with the cute little sloth tail candy canes, candy cane looking hearts, and again my cute little sloth fabric in the turquoise. In order to turn our squares into diamonds, what we'll need to do is snowball the corners. In order to do that, we need to first draw a diagonal line across the squares. One of the ways to do that is to line your squares up with the points along a line on your mat like I've done here and here lining it up just right and then I take my ruler and I line it up on the center too. Don't forget to account for the width of the pencil just a tiny bit so that the actual line is on the center and not the pencil lead. Draw a light diagonal line. Mine's a little darker so that you can see it and I've done two. You'll want to mark the backs of all of those two and a half inch squares and then we're ready to move to the next step. If you don't want to mark the backs of your squares with a diagonal line, you can use diagonal seam tape instead and skip the drawing step. That also works well. The next thing we're going to do is to pin our two and a half inch squares to opposite corners of our big squares. For my first one, I'm going to show you on the green square. You're going to take your small squares, make sure your diagonal line goes across this way, and then you do the same thing on the opposite corner. Not the adjacent corner, but the opposite corner. And I'm going to pin to hold them in place. Now that I've got them pinned, I'm going to take it to the machine. I'm going to stitch right along the diagonal line. As you can see, I have the square pinned up and at the machine. When I stitch, I'm going to stitch just to the side of the drawn line. And that means I want to stitch just to this side of it so that when I flip this over like this, then I will have the complete triangle that will cover the entire corner of the block. Okay, you can see I stitched just to the, in the side of the line so that when I fold it over like this, it will cover the entire corner. That's why it's called the stitch and flip method. Let's do the other side. So I rotate my block and I do the same, making sure that these are lined up. Again, just stitching just to this side, this side of the drawn line. And there you go. Now we're going to repeat with the others right here. 
and then I'll come right back and show you the next step. Now that I've sewn my corners on, on the opposite sides, the next step is to check. I just gently press it over, make sure that it's going to clear the edge of the block, and then trim this excess here. Trim it to about a quarter inch seam. You don't have to use a ruler and a rotary cutter, though you can, like that. And then I do the same on the other side, just double checking to make sure that it clears and it does. It's much easier to rip out this little bit and quickly reposition and restitch than it is to discover after you snipped off the excess that you have to redo it. So I'm going to trim, eyeballing my quarter inch. There's two, and I will do the same with the remaining ones, and then I'll show you the next now step. Now that we've trimmed the seams to quarter inch, we're going to gently press the corners back like this. And four. The next thing we're going to do is do the exact same thing on the opposite sides. So on this one, we're going to take our square, put it on this corner up here, pin it carefully. That way when I take it to the machine, it won't move. And so again along the diagonal line. I'll pin these and take it back to the machine and show you very quickly how it looks when we do that step. I'm going to repeat stitching along the line just like I did before stitching just to this side of the line so that when I fold it over, the, the entire corner of the block is covered. You could of course do this assembly line style, whichever way is best for you. Now we're going to repeat the process of checking and trimming and pressing. I check, yes, no problem. I trim, and then I'm going to take it to the mat and press. And now we press the other two corners. Lay my iron down, give it a quick press on the seam, flip it back, flip the other one back, press gently. The next thing we'll need to do is to square up these units. Check your pattern for the exact size that you'll need. The next step is to square up your units. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can do what I'm going to do here, and that is to use a four and a half inch square ruler and cut on all four sides, centering it evenly, or you can actually use your mat and do that. I'll demonstrate both ways. So you can trim your block using a square ruler, or let's show you, let me show you how to square it up using just your mat and a rotary cutter. To square it up using your mat, I know that my unit will be four and a half inches square. So I'm looking at my mat, I line up one corner at the four, I go over to the four and a half, and I notice there's a little bit extra. So I'm going to center it over just slightly so I split the difference just ever so slightly, making sure it's lined up down here. I take my ruler and I'm going to trim just a bit on both sides. On this side it's at the four and a half inch mark. Flip it around and I line it up right on the mat line right there and again trim it off at the four and a half inch mark. Because I split the difference on both sides it will come out equal when I'm finished. Okay, now it's four and a half inches this way, I just need to do the other side. So I rotate the block and I do the same thing, lining it up on one mat line here. Looking over, I've got about an eighth of an inch again, so I'm going to split the difference, move it ever so slightly, and then trim one side at the four and a half inch mark. Flip it around, line it up again. There you go, two different ways to square up your units. I suggest that if you anticipate trimming squares very often that you invest over time in a set of square rulers that will make it go much faster when you're trimming blocks, especially in the sizes that you are most likely to quilt.
There we are, our four diamond units. We're ready to sew it into a complete block. I've arranged my four diamonds in the way that I want them for the complete block. I've decided I'll have my sloth up here, green there, the red sloth tails down here, and then my turquoise sloth here. I just sew it together like a four patch. So for me, I choose rows. So I'm going to sew these two right sides together, quarter inch seam like that. Same with this one, right sides together with a quarter inch seam. And then I'll have two and two. Then I'll sew them together into the four patch. I'm using my diagonal seam tape here to line up my quarter inch seam. And I'm just sewing the top two units together into a two patch. I'm checking as I approach the diamond corner right here that I don't cut the point off. If I need to, I can take a couple of stitches just to the outside and then veer back to my regular quarter inch seam. And the same for the other one. These are my two patches. I'm going to press the seams open and then sew them right sides together with a quarter inch seam to make the four patch. That's You do have two choices here. You could either press the seams open or you could press them in alternating directions to nest the seams. I think I'm going to press mine open. I gave the seam a good press first. I'm finger pressing to help get it started. Use the nose of the iron. and press the seam open. Do the same with the other one. Then I'm going to use my finger to finger press it and then the nose of the iron. Shot of steam if you need to. There you go. Now I'm going to pin these right sides together along the center seam and stitch it into a four patch. I start with the center seam. I want to make sure the seams are aligned. Lining up carefully. If you have fork pins, they would be awesome in a situation like this. I don't have them, so I'm going to use regular pins. You don't have to pin quite this much, but I feel for me it uh, keeps my block accurate and straight. Okay, we're ready to stitch. I'm back at the machine ready to stitch the two sections together. Again, it's a quarter inch seam, right sides together. And when I get to this section right here, I want to make sure I don't cut my points off. So I'm stitched slowly, and if I need to, I just stitch slightly around the point and then back on track. And there's our diamond four patch block. The only All things up. left to do are to press the center seam open. I'm going to press it open to reduce the bulk. And then I'm going to add my churn dash borders. And I'll come back and show you what the final block looks like. The last thing to do before we attach the churn dash border is to square up the block. I'm not going to show that again because I did show two different ways earlier. You just use the same process, either a square ruler or your ruler and the mat. And there it is, the completed diamond four patch block. That's for the Aquilting Life block of the month for April 2022. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the best way you can support my channel. Thank you for stopping by. I'll see you next time.